Hi, my name is Susan Morris. I'm a healthcare executive with Cerner Corporation. We're a healthcare IT company. Prior to that, I used to work in a hospital in the supply chain field. I'm honored to be speaking today about Meaningful Use 3 barcodes. And I know we've had a lot of conversation about Meaningful Use and around barcodes, but what I'm hearing when I go to clients, when I go to different hospitals, is there's a lot of, there is a lot of confusion around what barcodes to capture, what information needs to be captured in the um, items, item master, um, what barcodes need to be scanned. So I just wanted to touch on that a little bit and provide a little bit of clarity. So what exactly is a UDI? UDI is comprised of two different components. First is your device identifier. That's a static portion in the UDI. It tells me that that pro what that product is and who manufactures it. Secondly, we have the production identifiers. Production identifiers are commonly referred to as PI, and those are those things like your lot number, your expiration date, your serial number, things like that. Do I need to have all of that information in my item master in the uh, supply chain? Absolutely not. Please don't do that. That's going to blow your item master up. We want to make sure that you only keep the static portion of the um, UDI, the device identifier, in your item master. Your clinical documentation should be able to parse out those production identifiers when the nurse scans the product during a procedure. The FDA has currently accredited three different um, organizations for uh, the standard, registering your product with a, to get a standardized number. Um, and we're going to go over those in just a minute, but I do want to break this down just a little bit to things that people will recognize. I have a picture of a can, of a, or I'm sorry, a bottle of a Pepsi-Cola, and the numbers that are circled under this barcode tell me that that is a 20-ounce bottle of Pepsi-Cola from the Pepsi-Cola Bottling Company. And it doesn't matter where I buy that from, it's always going to be that 20-ounce bottle of Pepsi-Cola from the Pepsi-Cola Bottling Company. It's not going to be a 12-ounce can or a 2-liter bottle. It's always going to be that 20-ounce bottle. And that's what we're trying to get to in healthcare. Retail's been doing this since the 1970s. They've had a long time to refine their system and to get all of the kinks worked out of it. Healthcare is in their infancy in this process, and we are going to see some challenges in the short term, and that may be a topic for a later date, but we are going to get there. We will get where retail is. It's just going to take some commitment and some perseverance. So the three, prod, or the three accrediting bodies by the FDA are GS1, or Global Standards 1, and they have a standardized 14-character um, barcode. It is recognized with 01 in parentheses at the beginning. So if you see a string of numbers with a 01 in front of it, that's your GS1 barcode, and that's the barcode that we want to capture in your item master. The HIBIC, or Healthcare Industry Business Communications Council, it's H-I-B-C-C is what you typically see, and we call that HIBIC, starts with a plus sign and typically an alpha character. And then they will have a string of um, characters that could be alphanumeric uh, from 6 to 23. So there is no standardized length on that, but the longest um, character field that you're going to need in your item master is 23 to hold your HIBIC barcodes. The ICCBBA, or International Council for Commonality in Blood Banking Automation, is used to identify tissue and blood products. So you're not going to see as many of these as you might, the, as you will, the HIBIC and the GS1 barcodes. Um, they start with the equal sign and a slash, and they have a standardized 16-digit field, but they are also alphanumeric characters in that field. When we look at the GS1 example that we have here, there's a lot of information on this label, and we need the information in both human and machine-readable format. And uh, the item, the numbers that are highlighted in red are our identifiers that we want to make sure are captured in the um, item master. You can see it starts with the 01, and then we have the string of 14 digits following that, and there's a string of other digits that are followed with parentheses. The, zero, the numbers following the 01 is what needs to be in the item master. The 17 in parentheses tells me that's the expiration date. If there's a 10 or a 21 in parentheses, that's for the serial number and lot number. I'm sorry, reverse that. The lot number and the serial number uh, in that order. So there, you can see there's a lot of information. It specifically identifies this product and when it was made to this label. Next, we have an example of the HIBIC barcode. And that's very similar to the information that's in that GS1 barcode example. 
We still have all of the human readable information. We have all of the barcodable or machine readable information. But the barcode you can see here is a little different. It's a 2D data matrix code. And that is um, really helpful for a lot of smaller products. If you think about a pack of suture, and I know sutures aren't implants, but think about the size of a pack of suture. They're about an inch and a half by three inches. That's not a very big area. You have a lot of information that has to go in very small real estate. So the data matrix code comes in very handy for that. Also think about chest tubes. That's very small, it's circular. You can't scan in a circle. So manufacturers are using the data matrix uh, code to solve some of those problems as well. Lastly, we have the ICC BBA product identifier. And again, the um, product identifiers are circled in this example. And they have in that example with the ICCBA, well, not only do we have the information that tells us what type of product it is, maybe it's an allograph or something like that, but it also gives us the donor source because these tissue usually comes from a cadaver and we have to trace that back to where it originated. So the product identifier will have both the information that tells us what type of product it is as well as where that came from. So and in this case, we again have the 2D barcode, which you can see there's an awful lot of information that's maintained in any of these barcodes. Many products also have um, barcodes for the catalog number. They have separate barcodes for the lot numbers. Being able to identify these standardized barcodes and um, how to recognize them and how they're different from the catalog barcodes or the production identifiers is going to be very helpful when you're trying to build them in your item master. If you need more information or would like to get more information and expand your knowledge on UDI and barcodes, please check out our um, Knowledge Center page on the ARM website. Thank you.